I am in Canton, Ohio. Uh, this is the hometown of President William McKinley. I did a separate video at the McKinley Presidential Library and Tomb, so make sure to check that out. Um, but I have an appointment to uh, visit his church. Uh, it's now the Crossroads United Methodist Church, and they're being very kind to let me in and see his pew, and also the flag that draped his casket at the funeral. And uh, we're gonna see some other stuff here in Canton. That's a pretty interesting city, so uh, we're gonna go check this out first. And right here is the historic Lincoln Highway that goes from Times Square in New York City to Land's End in San Francisco, California. This church building was built in 1883. It is on the National Register of Historic Places. This was the church that President William McKinley and Ida Saxton McKinley attended throughout their time here in Canton. William was a Methodist and Ida and the Saxton family were Presbyterian, and they actually married in the Presbyterian church, but they usually would have gone to services here. And this is their pew, with a very nice needlepoint cushion on it now. You would have had to pay for a pew closer to the front, but since the McKinleys were wealthy, they could afford it, and this was their designated pew, at least towards the end of their time in Canton. And they did let me sit in it. This was also the site of the president's funeral on September 19th, 1901, after his assassination. He also had services in Buffalo and Washington, D.C., but this was the final religious service before temporary burial at West Lawn Cemetery, which we'll visit later. These are the McKinley Memorial stained glass windows donated by his wife. This is an engraving of what the funeral setup looked like in the church. They do have the big flags still that are up on the organ, but they keep those in storage because they're in bad shape and very fragile. And this is the American flag that draped the casket of President William McKinley during the funeral. It is a 45 star flag and was given to the first lady at the internment. Not a lot of people get to see this, so it was a very special opportunity. This is a photo of McKinley walking to the church. They also showed me a small memorabilia cabinet. That's an old photograph of the McKinley home, which no longer stands, but I'll show the site in a little bit. This is a gavel made from wood of the McKinley home. A piece of granite and some commemorative ornaments from the McKinley tomb. And some stuff from his campaigns. Big thanks to the people at Crossroads for letting me in. There's a historic Art Deco Federal building. What's interesting is that this area still has the brick street from McKinley's time. And here's a random Corinthian column. There is the historic public library building. This plaque was made from the steel of the USS Maine. Football is a pretty big thing in Canton. Really beautiful building. So I was planning on visiting the First Lady's National Historic Site, and this is a unit of the National Park Service, and it's dedicated to the First Ladies. Um, unfortunately, I was kind of running late. Things took longer than I allotted. There's people everywhere looking at me. This is awkward. Um, but I went to the museum. I was gonna get the tour the next day. Um, kind of push them back some other stuff. 
um, but they don't allow photography in the museum that's in this historic bank building and it did go into like uh, the role of the first ladies they had uh, two of Caroline Scott Harrison's dresses so that's Indiana's first lady and uh, some dresses of the hostesses some White House China and uh, kind of went to their roles. This was the home of the Saxton family, so Eda McKinley would have lived here. I do not believe William McKinley lived here at any point. I think they just uh, turned it into a museum key because the McKinley house was raised and uh, they wanted a house museum. So they decided to do it here and based on the first ladies. Eda's father was a uh, banker here in Canton. So, uh, you know, they made the big bucks, and uh, William McKinley, uh, who was born in a pretty small house in Niles, Ohio, didn't come from too much. You know, married rich, and uh, like many of the great American heroes, uh, money bought him to that position. So, sadly, we are going to skip the tour of the Saxton home. Uh, I can't believe it, skipping a national park. So the police here don't have license plates and they all park uh, in this area. Very interesting. I'll also say I don't think I've ever seen more police cars than in a few hours here in Canton. William McKinley actually lived right here where the public library is now. The only sign that it was here is a historical marker. And I think it's a real loss for the country not to have his home here and preserved. Right here was his magical front porch, which is important because in 1896, he ran a front porch campaign. Back then, candidates didn't always go to the people. They came to the candidate. While William Jennings Bryan was traveling everywhere campaigning, McKinley would just give speeches to crowds who had come to Canton from his front porch. And over the course of the campaign, about 750,000 people had gathered in this area to hear him speak. In 1900, he didn't even do that. Of course, he was president, but he just gave a speech announcing his candidacy and then sat back and beat Bryan again. In the 1930s, the home was raised and the lumber was used to build benches and park shelters. Also, the library has quite an interesting roof. There's the McKinley High School. This place is called Woody's and it's an authentic drive-in with curb service. Back in the 50s and 60s, I read that they had a mini golf course. And uh, this is most famous as a root beer stand. I believe it's been here since the 50s. And there's my food. Now the big draw to Canton is the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Now I know nothing about that and really don't care, so I'm skipping out on that. But you can see there's like a football, that's the museum part, and they have a giant stadium. So uh, everyone skips McKinley and goes to uh, the football museum. Uh, there used to be uh, storybook parks along the American roadside, and these would have uh, fiberglass statues of uh, storybook characters and figures. And there used to be one here in Canton. It was called Mother Goose Park. It opened in the 1950s, and uh, it closed sometime in the 1980s. And pretty much everything is gone except for one relic, which I have located. Mother Goose Land used to be all around here. Um, and now all that's left is Willie the Whale, and I have to, uh, looks like I have to walk through a minefield to get to it. There's an old sign commemorating Mother Goose Land. It was established in 1956. There's like the psychedelic Mother Goose Land mural, at least they're still kind of commemorating it. I, this might have been here at the time of the park, but I doubt it. It's Mother Goose Land. And there he is. Billy the Whale. It's always nice to find a remnant from a long gone roadside attraction. Rest in peace, Mother Goose Land. Now, Willie has survived a lot. Of course, the park shut down, everything was probably destroyed. I don't know that for a fact. And uh, he's been in pretty poor shape, you know. This is a very uh, neglected area. Probably not safe. The interstate is right there. Um, looks really dirty. And I know at times, like, uh, Homeless people have lived in here, so. So well, he's been home to Jonah-like squatters. I think he's been repainted at some points, which is uh, pretty surprising. But based on some of the old photos I saw, it was just like one light blue color, like none of the colors seen here. So someone's definitely gone through and painted. And when you were at Mother Goose Land, you would probably walk inside. 
the mouth of the whale. Let's see, what has the whale been eating? There's some clothes. I think that's deodorant. Smoking a lot. Some dirty Q-tips. Alright, not bad. I was expecting a lot worse. There's some ducks. And uh, very polluted waters of this lake. That's pretty nice. Glad to see Willie is still hanging in there. Hopefully he can uh, be around a while longer. And uh, definitely want to see a storybook park. I've never been to one. There's still several around the country. So uh, hopefully I can go to one of those soon and film it. Within sight of President McKinley's tomb is the West Lawn Cemetery. Uh, this uh, castle turret thing was made by the Canton Waterworks in 1869. This historically was the main cemetery here in Canton. I figured we'll uh, take a look around. There's like a row of mausoleums along here. This brick one is pretty interesting. The Williams Mausoleum. You can look inside this one. These dates, 1836. Cemetery sculpture is always very interesting but very eerie at the same time. The barracks have a very grand mausoleum. Look at that, you can see McKinley's tomb there with these other mausoleums built into the hill. That's a pretty old bridge. Doesn't look that safe to walk on. There's most likely a uh, horse and buggy bridge. Can't drive on it anymore. This is dating way back to before cars. This is their Civil War Memorial. That's beautiful. McKinley himself was a Civil War veteran. He's most famous for his valor at Antinum in 1862, the bloodiest battle of the Civil War. He uh, very easily could have died in that battle while uh, running coffee. And this section has many Union veterans buried here. And that's not all, believe it or not, Frankenstein is buried at the cemetery in Canton, Ohio. All right, this is just a family named uh, Frankenstein. I don't know, I've never seen that last name before. At least there weren't like torch carrying mobs here in uh, Canton at any point. It's just, I'm sure, a good family. Homer Frankenstein served in World War One. A lot of these over time will get damaged. And see uh, the upper half of this figure has uh, fallen off or been destroyed. This interesting boulder monument uh, is the grave of William Reynolds, who was a Brigadier General during the Civil War. Not sure who uh, is buried here. It's a pretty old monument, but you can see Definitely a veteran. Wallace has an eagle, the, uh, the shield. It's really cool. And this one is an open book. After the funeral at the Crossroads Methodist Church, uh, the casket was brought here to Westlawn Cemetery to the Wirtz Receiving Vault, where it was laid to rest temporarily. It was common back then to have a the body in a uh, receiving vault. This was a temporary storage for bodies before uh, a grave could be built. To end the funeral ceremonies in 1901, the casket was brought right through these doors. Um, there would have, at that time, around 1901, there would have been honor guard present at, I think, all times right here. McKinley's body was in here until 1907, 
when the big tomb was completed. Eda McKinley would visit right here every day until her death in May of 1907 before the memorial was complete and dedicated and they were moved together in there. Here you can see the plaque. I really had to do research to find this place. You can see it was the temporary resting place of William McKinley. It really is a interesting and beautiful structure built in 1893. Now I'm at the Westbrook Veterans Memorial. Looks like they have quite a memorial here, so we're gonna go look at this now. They have some war trophies here. This is a Spanish mortar captured at the Battle of Manila Bay by Commodore Dewey. Um, of course, McKinley was the president during the Spanish-American War uh, in which we, uh, we took over the Philippines from the Spanish, basically. Uh, and they were a territory of the United States. Um, the battle was a pretty big deal, and uh, yeah, wow. Look at the face there. This French cannon was also captured at Manila Bay. Um, it was made in 1748 in France, and uh, the, the Spanish had it and were using it as part of their defenses of uh, the city of Manila in the Philippines. So uh, this was also captured by the men led by Commodore Dewey. The French also put faces on the back of their cannons. And you can see that's the French seal. Here they commemorate the five branches of the military uh, with their flags. There's the Coast Guard, the Marine Corps, the Air Force, the Navy, and the Army. And this is pretty cool. This is the base of the Coning Tower from the USS Maine. The main exploded in the harbor of Havana, Cuba on February 15, 1898. And uh, that explosion killed 252 American servicemen, so it was very tragic. So the explosion aboard the USS Maine was the excuse to begin the Spanish-American War. Uh, most uh, people in Congress uh, like like Theodore Roosevelt, for example, uh, they really, really, really wanted to uh, fight the Spanish and uh, get them out of Cuba and the Philippines and just, you know, kind of start building our own empire. Um, and a lot of people saw this as a perfect excuse. Um, McKinley, I, I didn't know this until recently when I did more research, he was, he was really reluctant to uh, approve uh, the war from Congress, um, but he did. And uh, it was one in three months, uh, but this is what started it all. We still don't really know why um, it blew up. There's, you know, maybe a conspiracy theory to start the Imperial War. Uh, I don't know. Um, but uh, it was a huge deal, of course, you know, 252 uh, servicemen. That's horrible. And uh, really, the war drum was starting to be beat. And uh, there's also memorials and little remnants in all sorts of uh, towns and uh, museums across the country. And of course, uh, Canton, because of McKinley, who was president during the Spanish-American War, uh, got a pretty big and important chunk of the main. All right, so that was McKinley's Canton. Uh, Canton, Ohio is a really cool city. Uh, filmed a few other videos here. Definitely worth uh, checking out for yourself. Um, if you like presidential history and roadside attractions, then uh, please subscribe and go watch my other videos, and thanks for watching.